Hey, all right, so it's week seven, and what I want to start off with is just a little bit of grading. As, as these papers and problem sets are coming in, I just want to um, hit on some low-hanging fruit for improving the, the quality of the papers. In general, they're looking really good, so thanks for all your hard work on that. So let me just, um, let me just tap this one first. And actually, I have a question for you. Mariah, I hope maybe you can answer it, maybe not, but I want to see, I want to see because I was just looking at your problem set one, uh -huh. which looked quite good. There were a couple little errors I want to go over. Okay. Um, overall, it looked good. And, and one of them just comes down to this frustrating formatting. Uh -huh. So you were, you were using the Microsoft Word equation editor? Yeah. Okay. So in what, what version of, are you on a, I think I'm and you're on a Mac. Yeah. Okay. So it, it could just come down to that oh, because. So it could have shown up well, yeah. Because what I'm just what I'm seeing. I mean, the, the, this format's great. Um, it's, and it's almost perfect. There's just a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, when I well, actually, I'll show you right here. When I go through and view these. Okay. So just look at the difference between this line and this line. And you can see, once I do my editing, it, it reverts to this weird small font default. Did you oh, ever? The, um, yeah, okay, so did you did you see that? Is there a way to toggle that off? Probably. Um, it's like it's one of those super annoying things. Like, no, I, mean, I, I don't I don't want tiny letters. I need big ones. Yeah. If you can help me with that, I will then just give you a couple pointers on the. Um, let's see. I don't know if, it, like, if it's a drop down yeah, here. If someone can tell me how to fix that, I would like love it. Really? Okay, let's try that. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to put in a new... Uh, yeah, you, you have to hack it, don't you? No. Let's just try one of these guys. Fraction. So you're saying if I put a space here, just like a, just a dud space. Okay, so let's try it. Let's just try A over B, which is... I like that size. Now there's a, there is a, there's a... There's my space right there, right? Yeah. Let me try this. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with um, uh, three. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put some spaces in. Okay, so those little those little dots right there are the spaces. Oh, that turned. I see what it did. It turned it into ellipses. All right, so now I will, so now I'm, I'm, I've got the spaces on the line already. I'm going to insert the equation there. I'm just going to put in a fraction because that's the one that's bugging me. This one will be A, this will be B. Oh, you know what? It's already, it's already small. <laughs> because the, yeah. Okay, I give up. For now, anyway. All right, so here, here's a, here are a few things. I'll tell you what I what um, I like about your answers is that you've got a good um, you've got great commas here, great uh, you know comma delimiters. The one error here is that the um, the units should not be italicized. Okay. If you uh, var variables are italicized, but units are not. subtle distinction there. So all these um, units should not be italicized. Um, I do like the fact you put your answer in bold, so that's, that's good. And your number of significant digits is right on as well, so thanks for doing that. 
Okay, so all that's good. Everything's good. The only the only error here is that you italicized your variables. Okay. And the technical error, I don't know exactly how this happened, but um, one human power is closer to like 100 watts, 115 watts. So um, some, somehow you got an extra well, yeah, factor of 100 there. I was doing that probably, I was in Mexico last week, so I was using the calculator on my phone. Oh. So that maybe just worked at the error. Okay, okay, that'll yeah, do it. The, the Mexican calculator excuse. Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's a good one. I like it. <laughs> uh, and then for horsepower, um, one human power is, you know, roughly a fifth or a sixth of a horsepower. And I think, I think you had the same, um, the same error here in terms of global technological uh, consumption. It's on the order of a, of a terawatt. A terawatt is 10 to the 12th, right? So it's 10 to the 15th would be a petawatt. 1.6. Yeah, one, one point, it's, or no, it's, no, I'm sorry. It's 16. No, it is. It's, um, Actually, no, no, that's, that's correct. Yeah, this is correct. Never mind. I, I think I, because um, it's 16 terawatts, which is 16 times 10 to the 12th, so 1.6 times 10 to the 13th. Yeah, that is that is correct. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. And then I'm guessing your conversion is there, so, yeah, 10 to the 13th. Let's just, let's just do that conversion really quick. Um, in, I'll do it in Excel. Just want to make sure we've got the horsepower number correct as well. So, uh, power, this is going to be in watts, and this is 16 E12, 1.6 times 10 to the 13th, and this is going to be uh, watts per horsepower, and that's 4 or 746. So horsepower equals watts divided by uh, horsepower. One point two point one four times ten to the tenth. Yeah. Okay. I misgraded it the first time. You you were correct on that guy. Nice job. Okay. So the only the only error was just this one uh, problem five. Everything else is good. So nice work on that. Okay, and then Daniel, I want to look at yours too. I'm guessing there are probably some correct answers in here. I just couldn't find them. Okay, uh, <laughs> um, so I actually just, uh, let me find this. I just, because you did the, the problems on um, YouTube. And so I, yeah. I did the seven and eight, it was like 100, uh, 70, 200 bits per joule per kelp, like 100, or it's like 100, or 383,000, okay. 100 Celsius, remember that was the laptop one, and then yeah. it was the, the uh, metabolic rate of the human, that was 100 watts. Yeah, well, was like right. Less, that's, there's a certain amount of bits that the human brain ran out okay. Well, and so here's, here's just a couple of things that I'd, I'd like you to do on a resubmission. So here, for example, um, I'd like I'd like to see the I'd like to see the commas in there, okay. and and we'll, we'll just keep it. You know, since um, since we're just dealing with you know three or four significant digits, don't put the decimals. So as soon as I see this, I can very easily say, oh yeah, it's 10 million joules. So it's just, it's just much easier for me to grade that way, and that's why the, the commas belong in there. Okay. This guy, um, right, four sig digs is, is sufficient. And I think, you know, sometimes I see that apostrophe, but I, I don't think that apostrophe is correct. I think it's just B, BTU, it's just plural, not, not uh, possessive. And then here, uh, you know, same thing, so just reformat that. And if you could do me a favor of just, um, so again, fix the significant digits. 
and tell me what the answer is just in a little sentence. Okay. Does that make sense? That was country one, country two. Yeah. Uh, you asked for data, and I couldn't find any on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a, like a first world, second world, third world analogy. What was that website we found last time? It's Charbin. Charbin, yeah. That's what Charts bin, um, and then what was our other? Uh, calories, uh, per capita calories. And then we're doing ESG later on today, right? Three? Every Tuesday, every Thursday. Three o'clock in this room? Three o'clock in Grizz House Nine. So for your, um, here's your, Here's your, uh, a, a good, I mean, not the, but this is one we found last week. So if I, I would just use this for your data. Okay. And the URL is chartsbim.com slash view slash 1150. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and I, and I did when I was grading this, I did, I did mention just those, those couple corrections to make. So do that. And then when we get down here, um, I'm assuming this is the answer, but what I'm, what I'm looking for, here, here's the format that I, did, that I need to see, along with a little explanation, is um, 10 uh, bits J minus 1 Kelvin. a little bit bigger in one second I'll tell you Control one superscript okay and Mariah you you use this format which is it's it's clear it's it's concise um, you know writing it with with a with a pair of Division signs, it gets it gets confusing. It's like where where's the real denominator? And if you if instead you supply the answer with an exponent, it means that joules are in the denominator, Kelvin are the denominator. So the the final answer should look like that. I don't know what the number is, but that's that's the format it should be in. Okay. So just you know re recalculate it, send send me the number, and then. As I said last week, with these last couple problems, th this is not convention. This is this is a this is a metric that I developed a couple years ago. So you, you you probably will not see this this number anywhere else. And so at this point, it's just it's just theory. And it does, does it have value? Who knows? I, I don't know. So that that's why um, I just want a little bit of a explanation. So you understand on that guy? So the, okay. the final answer is going to be a number, bits per joule per Kelvin. So I looked up that life wire is where I got yeah. 7,200 bits. So yeah. rather than 10 bits, it's at 7,200 or just from where I got my info. Or you said 10, that 10 bits is, is the answer that the exact answer that you're looking for? Uh, there is no answer. Okay. I just wrote the number 10 because I needed something to write. Okay. And then the rest of the problems, those are correct? Uh, not, like, just I wasn't sure because I couldn't find the answer. I, you just need to tell me where where on the spreadsheet your you answer is. Uh, do whatever you need to. Just tell me where it is. I just I just couldn't find it. Yeah. So one one example. I'll just go back. Here's um, one one example. There's uh, is the I the the. On this homework, the the answer was in bold. Okay. So you know to do that, like for example, if, if this is your answer, you, know, you could you could put it in bold, or if you like, you could you know you could put it in yellow and just say do something like this. So that's you know that's one way to do it. Just give me a little key where I'm looking. Okay, and then um, let's look. I'm also I'm really I'm really liking the quality of the writing and the in the summaries too, guys. You're doing a nice job 
and I'll I'll, hi I'll highlight what I what I really am liking here. So um, good title there. Just a little typo on the on the language, and you you pulled out some really nice um, really nice things here. Your, your first paragraph, Daniel, was really well really well written. And they did. They, you know, they, they called the um, called the Earth a giant chemical battery. So I think it's, and I think someone used the word layman too in their writing. And it's a good, it's it's gettable, it's graspable. It's like this, the this is the battery. This is the chemical battery we're using. And then something else really struck me too. This is summary two. I just wish I'm doing it. It looks like um, you didn't get mine, but I think what had happened is I oh. sent it by email. Okay. Because the middle thing wasn't working. Well. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I'll um I'll grade it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So sure. Okay. Good. This is something. Yeah. When when you look at this guy, there's there's some there's some kind of cool videos out there where there's a there's a guy driving across. Australia, and pretending he's driving back in time, and he's driving something like a million years a minute, and so within the first, I don't know, 15 or 20 seconds, he like leaves human civilization behind, and he's like, you know, driving, you know, back into the deep, dark, dark depths of, of time, and finally gets to like the first photosynthetic events, etc. But uh, this, this is something that really struck me about the. The paper, yeah, yeah. So you know those those very first you know moments where life says yes, I, I can exploit this radiation gradient, you know, coming from the sun hitting the earth. What do I do with these photons? And I um. I, to this day, I, I remain fascinated with um, you know what I like to call molecular evolution. And just just as a side note, I'm going to show you one quick thing. I'll show you why this is so fascinating to me. Um, papers in that same year, 2008, when I wrote that. Um, That when I wrote that um, energy paper, I was was also publishing on um, protein evolution. So the the idea was is that you know all of the proteins in our bodies in every animal started somewhere, right? You know you you obviously inherited your set of proteins from your parents and, and they, they from their parents and then on and then on. If you go if you go far enough back, you start getting into Richard Dawkins' territory, and I just want a fascinating read on this. It's a little bit of an aside, but not too much. Um, it's um, so. Um, Dawkins takes a look at just the you know the broad history of, of DNA throughout all like life on Earth, <laughs> not not a small topic, but you know look, looks at where say humans and current chimpanzees had their last common ancestor, uh, and then looks at say even as far back as to when plants and animals had their last common ancestor, and says you know we're all we're all out here living on some little you know taxonomic branch, but if you, you go back far enough, you start to find these, uh, these nodes. And it's, it's, this is, um, this is digestible, it's, uh... So you would say he would approach an idea that the matter that we're constructed of had once been that of another part of matter? 
Uh, it's not a, he doesn't he doesn't follow it on a molecular or atomic basis. He just he just follows it on a um, inheritance basis. And you know, and, and the fact of the matter is, when you you know when at the moment of conception, at least in in sexual reproduction, there there is an actual transfer of matter. You know, the DNA from the from the father combines with the DNA from the mother. I mean, it's actually a material coupling that happens there. And then the replication machines get going. And you can even see he's got a little, you know, replicator happening there. I meant yeah. transcending the lifetime of the planet and what elements and energy constructed the same organic life millions and billions of years ago exists today except just reformed. Yeah, well, he, he treats it more from a biological standpoint than a physical one, but okay. uh, it's not it's not that far off. So yeah, the point um, where, I, where I was going with that is that, you know, we, we can, with um, big data or information technology or whatever, go and, and sort of mine the genomes of other organisms. And that's what I did with this paper. Um, I'll just show you some of the data mining that we did. So we actually compared, this is the, this is the, um, Genome, or this is the this is the collagen sequence for multiple animals. So humans have one, mouse has one, trout has collagen, Streptococcus. There's a shrimp virus that has one, Trichodesmium. This is the sort of interesting bug we were investigating, and then here's a, another bacteria. What you're seeing here is this alignment of every third amino acid being glycine and it's it's this it's this signature that makes collagen collagen now we could do the same thing for photosystem one you know every single plant that you see around here is you know that has that is green that is doing photosynthesis also has some photosystem one molecule what's fascinating to me even back to this paper is like it all happened, you know, several billion years ago, sort of molecule by molecule, and it was the, um, the, the you know, natural evolution of organic solar panels. <laughs> you know, they, they, they self-assembled one molecule at a time, and, and there you go. So, I don't know, I don't know if you, did you write that, Daniel, or is that more just kind of a paraphrasing of the... Uh, the no, I think I just paraphrased Yeah, it, yeah. That's in there. Yeah, so it's good. I mean, you, you pull out a nice, a nice sentence that really brings the message of the of the paper uh, of the paper home. So, what is the? Uh, I know that it's been accelerating that uh, that, that that graph explained it in terms of years left, or uh -huh. years until equilibrium. Yeah. What is equilibrium? Like the next kind of That's a great question. So the so the question is when when does equilibrium occur? Well, um, and, and I just it's funny you ask that because just a couple um, a couple days ago I was reading, and there there are a lot of different ways to interpret the second law of thermodynamics. But one is that I've got something um, I've got something hot over here, and I've got something cold over here, and if I have that thermal gradient. I can do work. That's exactly how every single one of these combustion engines work. You make you make the engine hot, the atmosphere's atmosphere is cold, uh, explosions happen inside, and, and away we go. Um, same thing too with the electric bus that's that's driving by. You've got the you know the nice store of electrons and and um, charged ions sitting in the battery. They flow through the motor, and away you go until until there's nothing left. So, you know, as we know from 101, there are multiple energy sources, and even in the Shramsky paper, it, it appears as if there's a lot of nuclear fuel still left on the planet. So, to answer your question, you're, you're done when everything's the same temperature, or everything's the same electrical potential, or everything is at the same height. That's, that's, that's when you're done. That's when you're in equilibrium. And you can't, you can't uh, move. So, well, when, like, when the majority of the 
the area, it wouldn't as, con once it as conform to the majority, because we are the minority of this planet, the, the ecosystem and the atmosphere, you know, within the biosphere. Yeah. I mean, that's equilibrium. I thought equilibrium was us equalizing with with our surroundings. Well, it, it's true. So, so thermodynamic equilibrium of a human is, is reached when you're when you're dead. You know, when you're. And I guess there's the saying in the in the ER, you're not you're not dead until you're warm and dead. I think if you, you know, you've heard about the people that fall on the ice and they're, they're still, still alive, just a little cold, they might be breathing or, uh, you know, heart might, might be, but they're not dead yet. So the, so the saying is, you're not dead until you're warm and dead. You're not dead until you are the same temperature as, as the atmosphere. So, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, equilibrium is, is when everything's the same temperature. So, what, what, what one will have to do? I think the equilibrium that they're talking about is when the Earth is like the moon. Right. So, that, but it was, but it was estimating based upon current sure. combustion. And they use the omega metric, the sustainability metric, um, to signify the amount of biomass left on the planet, which is basically the reason why we haven't reached equilibrium. So the so the question is, and we'll we'll keep it on the table. It's a good one. I I can't. I cannot answer it, and nor nor can anyone else. But I will I will point you in the right direction. And this also dovetails into dovetails into summary three, where we do some extrapolation. So if if you were just to ask somebody on the street, where does this line? intersect this graph, you know, I, I would say, well, we're right about there somewhere. You know, uh, 20, 2250. Because that's, that's the direction that line is going, right? Does that make sense? So we got like 100. Or, well, let's take another view. There's another graph. It's not the only graph in this, in this paper. Here's another one. Um, you know, you, you look at this guy and you say, um, well, this, this line also looks as if it might intersect somewhere, uh, 20, maybe 2100. But then you go up here and you say, well, this isn't actually zero. Zero's down here somewhere. Where does this line intersect zero? You don't know. So the, the answer is you don't know because we're still sitting here in the present, hopefully guiding the future, not just waiting for the end to occur. I mean, we, we, we can see the past, we can see the future, and so this, this is now our duty, burden, whatever you want to call it. So, okay. yeah. So, so right there, though, that one, I mean, that's 2,000. We're looking at, what, less than, I mean, we're coming right upon 1,000. So, I mean, it looks like we're not even going to make it out of the century before that happens. So we're looking at respirators, like, oh, but we're going to all be Darth Vader. I hope not. I mean, it it hap I mean, it's it hap it's happening in uh, Beijing right now. There's a lot of people running around with face, face masks on. Uh, you know, and I don't, I, I don't know that much about uh, some of the things that are happening in, in Africa. I mean, I, I wish I had time to study it, but um, a lot of people said, you know, like, you look at somewhere like Somalia, Ethiopia, et cetera. I mean, those were the, the, the cradle of civilization, you know, the, the bread basket or whatever. And, um, and now these places have just been, you know, whatever, over-farmed, over-developed, and desertification happens as, as a result of that. So, the, you know, the point is, now is the time to build the circular economy, build the circular ecology, and, and um, you know, move, move away from the uh, uh, non-sustainables. So, I, I just can't answer the question. I mean, we're, we're, we, now, we now have the, the burden of knowledge, if you will, to um, arrest these curves. All right, what else?
So again, nice work. Um, just a few typos there on the apostrophes. You want to, I mean, you, and you really do. I, I can't emphasize this enough. There's a, there's a story where um, the band Van Halen used to say, no green M&Ms in the food backstage. I don't know if you guys know the no green m and story or not, but uh, the question is, well, why not? You know, and so as soon as the, um, you know, the band gets backstage and there's green M&Ms in the bowl, they're like, okay, no show tonight. Because if you guys can't figure out the no green M&Ms in the bowl, you probably forgot to, you know, secure the guy wires and double check the, the pyrotechnics and all that. So it, it comes down to the details is, is my point. And so with something like this, just read it to yourself, and so when you read this, say the magnitude of this energy storage gradient, it is distance. The, so the, the contraction, the apostrophe, it means it is. So just read that and, and don't make that mistake. And I know sometimes it's hard as techno, technical folks to get all the language right, but uh, it's important. This too, I mean, all of this is correct. The, um, you know, omega is the sustainability metric, P is this, but just write this as part of a normal sentence, not as centered text. Just let it, let it flow as, as a normal part of the paragraph. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just, it's just kind of distracting. It's not, it's, it's like, okay, what, what am I, I mean, the, the equation is fine, this is perfect, I and mean, that's exactly how you want to do it, but put that equation as part of a sentence. And then it also, I, I, this, um, that's not, uh, did, that's extraneous, so just leave that out. Okay. Um, and what I didn't, what I did not see, and then this is also, so leave that out, leave this out, and what I did not see I didn't see anywhere in the text where you actually referenced Tramsky or Brown. So, so, so somewhere up here, you you just need to reference them. That's all. Like actually pull a direct quote. No. Or no. Uh, uh, this article. And I can't I can't Tramsky. type in here. This article, Tramsky et al. 2015, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so that's that. <sighs> Just got to show you one more thing before I move on. This this paper. Um, it was it was bizarre in that this um, this bug. Trichodesine has this really long collagen molecule sitting out here beyond the other collagens, and it uses it to, um, let me show you. So when I, when I first found that really long collagen molecule, I'm like, what the heck is collagen doing in a bacteria? Well, it, it forms these blooms that are the size of clouds. And so it's this sticky molecule that holds together. And you can, you can almost envision this happening. These are very ancient bacteria. I mean, they, they've been around for a you know, billion years. And so they are actually sucking nitrogen out of the atmosphere and putting it into life. So the, the, these ancient organisms are responsible for, you know, driving the, the engines of life. They're, they're taking dead diatomic nitrogen and putting it into ammonia, you know, uric acid, etc. Okay, enough about that. Phytoplankton. Phytoplankton. They provide up to 50% of Earth's oxygen. They do, yeah. I mean, they, they basically made the atmosphere. Paper notes, uh, documents, courses, 
of course. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 do it. Yeah, it'd be, it's nice, because then you've got it, you've got it, you've got it correct, and then you've got something like, yeah, this is my, yeah. It's just, it's just convention, you know. Okay. So I like the, I like the title here. Nice little rhyme. Who, um, I've heard this author before. Smell? Where, where, where's Smell from? Well, when you were on World Leaders last time, yeah. when you put the little tab down, yeah. the, it showed Smill. Smill came reference. up as a reference. Okay, so you dug out there and got that one. Cool. cool. I mean, this is from his uh, take on the evolution of biomass and the necessity of it. And where is Smill? Sounds Russian, I don't know. I didn't do enough research. He's worth looking up. Though. Yeah. The smell. I, it, it's funny because that, that name just kind of keeps uh, coming up. I'll, I'll, I'll dive out there really quick. It might even just come up on a... Vaclav smell. It's funny. It's like I, I feel like I met the guy. Harvesting the biosphere, human impact. Is this it? Yeah, Population. I think it's number 24 on, on Transy's papers. Oh, yeah, so, so it was referenced. Yeah, I just want to see. It seemed to have a lot to do with uh, the biomass aspect. Yeah, okay, so he's di diving into phytomass, zoo mass, wood harvest. Yeah, these are good, good big numbers. That's a good find. Imhoff. Um, Barbarossa. Herbicide. Oh, wow. It's a nice big juicy paper. Highly managed agrarians. You haven't memorized this paper? <laughs> no. Should I write a song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it takes a deep dive. Net, yeah, yeah. Uh, changing stocks. Zoom as. This new reality cannot be reversed rapidly. Ice free incorporate 9%. A lot of words, not too many graphs. Oh, yeah. to see in era following energy values. That's the economy back on the snow. Okay, yes, he's, he's, he's done a lot of publishing. Thanks for finding that, though. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, everything looks good here. I want to show you, oh, just um, no italics on this, though. Okay. Yeah. And here's another little trick. I, I, I put this multiplication in here. And if you're using the right version of Word, you can use it. So I've got my laptop back. And here's how to do it. Uh, backslash times. Okay. And it puts in the times symbol for you. Exactly. It doesn't look like X is a variable. Uh, B is good. Everything is, is italicized properly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, one other thing, or two other things, and I saw this in a few other papers, is that 
when you're when you're running your um, numbers and units, you, you need a space between the number and the unit. And if you've got um, a number that's less than one, put the leading zero. Use that leading zero too. So do that. And then another another issue is let's see if I let's just try this. So I'm going to say, say ten uh, zeta joules. force this thing to, okay, see I've got this number, I've got a thousand zeta joules. Mm -hmm. You want that to breed as one word, and you don't want to put a hyphen in there. So here, in Microsoft Word, this is important for, for everybody, um, if I do control shift space, it keeps it together, right? So you, you, you lose a little bit of your formatting because like, oh gosh, why isn't there more there? But and if I turn on control shift eight, you can see that that circle is not a dot. So in general, all these little dots are spaces. But the, yeah, so the circle is just, it's a non-breaking space. It's a different type of white space. You know, it's not a tab, it's not a paragraph return, it's not a space, it's a non-breaking space. That's also very handy in your technical writing if you're using Microsoft Word. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Had that from before. Yep, yep, there it is. And it's the same thing too. You can also put in a um, Microsoft Word treat, treats this little uh, treats that negative sign as a. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing here. I'm just I'm just right. I'm just right here. Uh, Microsoft Word treats that negative sign as a hyphen, and it can also break across the page, but if you do control shift hyphen, it'll be a non-breaking hyphen. So non-breaking space, non-breaking hyphen will keep the, the the number and the units and the exponents all in one line. Yeah. Yeah. I like that little symbol. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good, good. <laughs> it's a good one for the digital age though. It's good. Is it really 7.5? It's 7 7.4. To, to, the, to the nearest uh, 100 million, though, you're correct. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. It's more, it's more than, it's more than 7.45, I would assume. Okay. Um, I like the analogy, running Google Maps on your smartphone. Uh, and one, one other thing to, to bring up in this Tramski is. This, it's, it's, that, it's that curve right there. And that's either, that's either cause for grave concern or it's cause for um, rejoicing. Even this morning there was, an article, there was a thing on the radio about smart metering in California where you've got um, uh, an app on your phone that's, that's telling you what your rate of power demand is compared to the grid. And from a sustainability standpoint, you know, since, you know, until we get large scale storage on the grid, like the um, uh, pump storage at Gordon Butte, until California gets its 1.5 gigawatts of storage online, the point is you, you want to keep your power, we want to keep our power consumption rate flat. If everybody turns the light on at once, and then turns them all off at once, it's a bad thing. It, do, it does not work very well for the gas turbines, coal-fired power plants, nuclear plants, you, you know, all of it. So the, the point is, you, you would like supply to exactly mimic or mirror demand. And this downward curve that we're seeing here could be, oh gosh, we're becoming more efficient. I don't need as much energy because my car is more efficient, my light bulbs are more efficient, I need less power per person. Or it could be, oopsies, we have, you know, depleted so much energy, there's just not as much to go around. So there's two different ways to interpret that curve. And the the um, the authors do mention 
do mention the moon. And it's, I, don't, I don't think it's all that um, uh, surprising that we, we do have this sort of coincidental move. You know, you look at um, you know, someone like Elon Musk who is simultaneously pursuing solar energy and electric cars and space travel. <laughs> because, like, hey, so w w the, we, we do know that planet Earth will not last forever. The question is, you know, can, can we maintain it so that we're not forced to go somewhere else? Because a lot harder, <laughs> a lot harder to start somewhere where there's no biomass, you know, no oxygen atmosphere, et cetera. So um, that's, a, that's also a very uh, poignant sentence. Um, right here, Tyler, you can see where I popped in one of those non-breaking spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the, the leading zero. Uh, these guys, uh, no italics there. Um, I put in the, the spaces there. I think you've got a... Uh, so, Daniel, this is the this is the more conventional way to uh, denote the variables. So ap after you've given your equation, the, the, the variables are just written out. If you need numbers in there, you can just, just write the numbers too, but just keep it as a, as a paragraph structure. So that's the, that's the convention. And I think you can insert an equation box that structures it differently. Than you, you can, uh, yeah, if you, if you need to, but in general, um, I would, I, you know, in, in general, I wouldn't, you know, I would go back to that, uh, you know, right here, you know, 10, 10 bits per joule uh, per Kelvin. I know I'm just kind of playing around here, but, you know, if you need to put in something like that, that's the way it would look in a, in a written document. Well, yeah. So I'm resubmitting my um, ideas from the I bolded all the answers. Oh, super. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. And here's, uh, let's see here. I might have mentioned this previously because what, I guess what I'm, what I'm hoping to do now, you know, with with summary two, with summary three, what I really want to do next is like turn the corner. You know, we've, we've kind of seen the bad news. We know there's a lot of good news in the in the textbook. This is another neat little clearinghouse for what the future of renewable energy might look like. So you can click on a state and see what the renewable energy portfolio or profile might look like. Might as well start with, excuse me, Montana. It's a little bigger. And so, as you know, there are, are there 10 chapters in the book? I think there's 10 chapters total. You know, it starts off with primary energy, then it goes solar thermal, it goes solar PV, then we do biomass. We're about to start into wind, wave, tidal, geothermal. And, uh, and here they are. There's almost exactly 10 different renewables for the 10 chapters of the book. So uh, this is PV, so that's our chapter three. That's also PV chapter three, but larger scale. You know, so so these, these authors are saying, yeah, you need some residential rooftop solar in Montana, but hey, there's so much property out there. Let's, let's, go, uh, let, let's go with solar farms. Concentrated solar. Talk about that a little bit in the book, but that what they're showing here is a mirror directing solar energy into a, and they've got a light bulb there, but really what it is, there's an engine, there's a, there's a steam engine sitting there at the, at the center, it's either you know, a Stirling engine or some other type. Onshore wind, 35%, and we're moving in that direction. Offshore, none, because there's no shoreline in Montana. Uh, government rooftop, 2%, well, just, that's, that's fine. So you can imagine, you know, solar panels on the, on the state house. Um, you know, since the, I don't, I don't see the, um, 
I don't see, well, we do have some solar at the University of Montana. We've, we've, we've applied for several grants, gotten them, and so even right now, the solar panels that are on Lomas and were paid for with a student grant that, that energy technology students wrote. There's another proposal to put 50 kilowatts out at the West Campus that was also written by a University of Montana students, so that project is also underway. Um, so solar PV that you would see at this university would fall under that category. Um, wave devices, no, no shoreline. Geothermal, it's significant. I would, I would expect it to be a little, little bit higher uh, for Montana. But some of these, some of these get into some some big dollars. Someone was talking about converting um, coal strip to geothermal. It's doable, but no one's got the two billion dollars sitting around just to knock that out. Hydroelectric, we're pretty close now. This is 19 percent of the primary. What you'll typically see in Northwestern Energy's literature is that 61 percent of the electricity supplied to Montanans in Montana is hydroelectric and it's probably not a not a, uh, a bad estimate we do export way more than, than we use so the um, hydroelectric would just represent that that portion what I'm not seeing on here is um, is solar thermal uh, for for residential electricity transportation Heating, cooling. So I'm, I'm a little surprised by that, that I don't I don't see solar thermal as a as an energy source. Can you even throw commercially adopted as well? What I'm also surprised is I don't see biomass on there at all. I'm a little surprised by that too. So nothing nothing's nothing's perfect, but uh, there it is. It could be that biomass is just is just relatively modest. On the other hand, right right now uh, my business partners and I are looking to see if we can't convert the hardened generating plant to 100% biomass. I mean, there, there is enough biomass to run hardened sustainably at 120 meg is what, where it is. So hardens maybe 5% of coal strip. If you try to run coal strip on biomass, you cut down the whole forest in a, in a year. It's just, it's, that's, the rate, that's the rate at which we're burning coal. So, But uh, hardened could be run that way and the you know the, then of course jobs are, are mentioned so construction you know building this renewable energy infrastructure and there's operation just you know keep keeping the turbines up and running Ryan Carson who's an alum of the program is a good example of that up in uh, Judith Gap uh, keeping the solar solar panels you know wired up and maintained um, hydroelectric does employ people too, to to monitor uh, dam output so there it is. It's week six, right? It is week seven. Week seven. Yeah. Well. So we're on. Yeah. And this one too. So they're they're saying that. Um, yeah, there there are a lot of a lot of statistics out there about how many people you know die prematurely as a result of of pollution. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this summary three is due Tuesday. Yeah, turn in summary three a week from the day, please. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so this is this is kind of interesting too. It's it's showing that uh, you know right now nine cents a kilowatt hour. That's about right. Northwestern Energy has just raised their rates to eleven point five cents a kilowatt hour, so it's a little little bit off. But what they're showing here is that uh, the renewables are now levelized. You know, it's not it's it's not any more expensive to do renewable than it is to do fossil fuels. So we are we are sitting at a very special uh, time in history. So there it is. Okay, I'm going to pause now, and then we'll um, I'll, we'll get into the next chapter here. It's kind of a long one. Just had to do it. <laughs>